A war of words on human rights is escalating between China and the United States. Beijing has released a report highlighting alleged rights abuses by the U.S. last year. And it follows coordinated sanctions by Western nations on China for its treatment of Uyghur Muslims in Xinjiang. Now, Beijing has zeroed in on Washington's handling of the pandemic. It calls the government's actions reckless and says it resulted in the deaths of half a million Americans. China also points to 2020 presidential election and subsequent violence at the Capitol building. Now, Beijing says that this is evidence that democracy is failing in the United States. And it says that ethnic minority groups in the U.S. are suffering systematic racial discrimination. It cites the death of George Floyd at the hands of a white policeman as an example of racial disharmony. Now, China is also involved in a diplomatic spat with the EU over those Xinjiang san sanctions. Both sides have summoned each other's envoys to protest. Rights groups say that at least a million Uyghurs have been detained in camps in Xinjiang. Authorities are accused of forced sterilizations and labor, but China maintains that the detention facilities are re-education camps. Simon Marks joins us now from Washington, D.C. Simon, how is the U.S. reacting to these claims and accusations from China? Well, they haven't yet responded, uh, Dawn, to this specific uh, set of claims and accusations from Beijing. But uh, there are echoes in what the Chinese have said over the last few hours uh, of what they said face to face to Secretary of State Antony Blinken and National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan. Uh, uh, that very contentious summit meeting in Alaska last week when the Chinese specifically pointed to what they claimed were problems with American democracy citing, for example, uh, the United States treatment of the Black Lives Matter movement, uh, saying that there were millions of Americans who had lost faith in uh, America's democratic system, as evidenced by the millions of Americans who believe even now that Joe Biden is an illegitimate president and who falsely believe that last year's presidential election here was rigged. So this is a fresh indication that the Chinese feel very emboldened about saying directly to the United States and to the rest of the world that the United States has no right, as Chinese officials put it last week, to speak to China from uh, a position of presumed power uh, and that in no way does the United States reflect global opinion about China's development and China's future. This is, as The Economist newspaper uh, characterizes it uh, in its latest edition, uh, a growing battle between autocracy and liberal democracy uh, for the right to be the dominant force in the geopolitical space. And Simon, now with these rising tensions between these two powerhouses, how is the Biden administration likely to handle Beijing Well, there's every indication that President Biden still believes that uh, the best uh, way in which he can deal with Beijing is to sit down across the table from Chinese officials saying that the United States is not America alone. It's not isolationist. It is speaking on behalf of a range of democracies, partners, allies uh, who have similar concerns about uh, China's territorial expansionism, about human rights, and who uh, similarly are committed to an international rules-based system. But it's also become apparent from what we heard coming out of that meeting in Alaska last week, and specifically from the White House a little bit earlier this week, that the United States also sees this as uh, a competition with China economically, that President Biden is planning to devote considerable U.S. government resources, White House officials say, to trying to compete with China in areas where currently uh, the Chinese are streaks ahead of the United States. Solar panel production, for example, uh, battery production, semiconductor production. So this is a United States preparing to move the battlefield in a slightly different different direction as far as uh, economic competitiveness is concerned, uh, but also preparing to keep the tariffs that the Trump administration put into place absolutely in place, uh, believing that sanctions can concentrate the minds of China and influence to change its behavior, although there's no evidence thus far that the sanctions have done that. 
All right, Simon, thank you very much for your time. Simon Marks there in Washington, D.C.